This is Mac OS Ken. All U.S. Apple stores are open ish. Epic and Apple have an actual date in court and fighting fire with fire in Arizona. It's Tuesday, the 2nd of March, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Audible Plus. Content that entertains, inspires, and informs. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more in that your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Oh, from just day. For the first time in almost a year, all 270 U.S. Apple stores are open in some capacity. According to a piece from 9 to 5 Mac, it was 354 days ago, Friday, the 13th of March, 2020, that Apple closed all of its retail stores outside of greater China. It is, of course, still not the before times. According to the piece, all Apple stores still enforce health and safety guidelines that include reduced occupancy and a mask requirement. Apple continuously evaluates local COVID conditions, and it's highly possible that some stores could temporarily close or return to express operations in the future. In fact, some are still operating with only express pickup of online orders. That said, all 270 U.S. locations are now open in some capacity. Elsewhere on the planet, 9to5Max says about a dozen stores are still closed in Brazil and France. Stores in Mexico are set to reopen today. Apple and Epic have a date in court, like a put-it-on-the-calendar date. Apple Insider says U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers wants both parties ready to rumble on the 3rd of May. And some of it might even be in person. According to the piece, the judge would prefer to see witnesses in the courtroom rather than on screen. According to the report, Judge Gonzalez-Rogers thought that the case was important enough to require a meeting of people to occur instead of a virtual session. There was also the belief that the witnesses will be less inclined to misspeak or lie after being physically sworn in. I get the whole honor and seriousness of court, but this seems a bit weird. You know, because of the thing. Apple Insider says it was reasoned that Apple and Epic had resources available to quarantine participants for two weeks after the trial takes place. The court will also minimize the risk of infection in the courtroom itself by limiting attendees and strategically distancing active participants where possible. To her credit, the judge does seem to get that in-person may not fly. If not, she's cool with Zoom or some sort of technological solution. If it comes to it, getting going in the spring beats the need for in-person, according to the report. Apple and Google are said to be lobbying hard against HB 2005. Seems only fair. The law was crafted by a lobbyist. Mac Rumors reminds readers HB 2005 is legislation that would prevent developers from being forced to use Apple's in-app purchase options. A piece from Protocol had Arizona State Representative Regina Cobb complaining, We went through a very difficult weekend where Apple and Google hired probably almost every lobbyist in town. Well, at least one wasn't hired by them. While Mac Rumor says Representative Cobb created the bill, it also says Cobb developed the bill after being approached by lobbyist Ryan O'Daniel, who represents the Coalition for App Fairness. You remember them. They're the group of developers that includes Match and Spotify. It was put together by Epic about 10 minutes after Epic went to war with Apple over in-app purchases. Will the bill survive? It's hard to know right now. According to Mac Rumors, it is not clear if HB 2005 will pass in Arizona as it is facing opposition from Arizona Democrats who do not believe that state legislature should interfere with ongoing litigation, referencing the legal battle between Apple and Epic Games. 
If you're a developer hanging on to the developer transition kit Apple rented to you, they really want that back soon. Mac Rumors says the Cupertino company has sent out emails to developers who still have the Mac Mini DTKs, asking for them back by the end of this month. While Apple is asking for the kits back earlier than originally planned, it's not something for nothing. As we mentioned in our last email, says yesterday's email, upon confirmed return of the DTK, you'll receive a credit for $500 US in the form of a one-time use promo code valid until the end of 2021. You can use it toward the purchase of a new M1 Mac or other Apple products ordered to the Apple Store online. The piece points out that developers paid $500 to be part of the program, so the $500 credit is not the worst deal ever. It is better if you live in the States, though. Developer Steve Trotton-Smith says what Apple is giving is the equivalent of $500 US, not the equivalent of the initial fee to join. He's in Europe, so he's getting 412 euros, not the 539 euros he paid for the program. All in all, he seems to have said on Twitter, this DTK program has been a pretty appalling developer experience. I say seems to have said because that's the quote in the Mac Rumors piece. Click the link, though, and that Twitter message is gone. Google has updated more of its apps for iOS, and Gadget says for the first time in months, Calendar, Docs, Gmail, Meet, Sheets, and Tasks have all been updated. Aside from Tasks now supporting widgets on iOS 14, the piece says these are minor updates centered around bug fixes and performance improvements. One does wonder, though, what has taken so long. The piece points out that the updates mark the first time Google has updated these apps since Apple made adding privacy labels a prerequisite to updating. And yet the search giant has added privacy labels to some apps it still hasn't updated. For example, the piece says the company hasn't made any changes to the Chrome app since November. Google rolled out the most recent version of the Drive iOS app on the 7th of December, the day before Apple made the privacy labels mandatory. The Drive App Store page now includes a privacy label, but Chrome's does not. More news in a moment, but first a word from Audible and their great new plan, Audible Plus. You know Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audio books. Now they have this sort of smorgasbord plan, giving you access to thousands and thousands of select Audible originals, audiobooks, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of popular shows, as well as exclusive series. I told you yesterday that I had Bram Stoker's Dracula in my queue. That title has vexed me. I've owned at least a couple of physical copies, but I can never get my head around the cadence. I took the Audible Plus version on a walk last night, and I am hooked. Seriously, it was only a 20-minute walk, and I'm already further than I ever got on my own. Now multiply that by thousands of titles. There is just so much stuff to hear. While you work, while you work out, on a walk, or on a drive, lots of great stuff, and you can start listening for free. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500, 500 to start your free 30-day trial. Whether you're looking to strengthen skills, be more informed, or just be entertained, Audible Plus has tons of titles for you. Visit audible.com slash macOSCan or text macOSCan to 500, 500 to start your free 30-day trial. We'll spend the rest of the day traveling the globe. More growth for Apple in India, this time on the tablet front. Mac Rumors has new numbers from IDC that show iPad growing its market share there by 13% year over year. It's kind of a good news, bad news story. The growth was enough to put Apple in third in terms of tablets for India, 
The bad news? The top two players, Lenovo and Samsung, saw their shipments grow by more than 150% each compared to 2019. Mac Rumor says that's because they sell cheaper, low-end tablets compared to Apple's iPad line. I said it was good news, bad news, but it can be spun back to good news. Third place means there's room to grow, which is the kind of thing investors like to hear. Apple is facing yet another lawsuit over battery issues tied to iPhone 6. To Portugal we go, where Apple Insider says consumer group Deco Protest has launched a lawsuit against Apple, alleging that designed obsolescence of the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6S forced consumers into an early upgrade. Yes, four years later we are still talking about Throttlegate. In fairness, though, the piece says Deco Protest has been trying to get Apple to answer for the issue for the past three years. If everything goes the consumer group's way, Apple could end up on the hook for about $8.4 million. I'm pretty sure Apple's made that much since the start of this sentence. And finally today, it's apparently time to say bye-bye to Buddy Build. Mac Rumors says the Vancouver-based app startup, which Apple bought in 2018, will close up shop this fall. The piece says Buddy Build focuses on tools for developers that are designed to let them quickly and easily build apps through GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. While it's apparently stood as its own thing, the piece indicates that the staff was folded into the Xcode engineering group when the startup was purchased. Hopefully that means no job loss. In an email sent to existing customers, the piece says Buddy Build says the services will no longer be supported as of the 31st of March 2021, and updates will be ceased. By the fall, the piece continues, the company will shut down operations altogether. Coming up in a few minutes, recently I had an aha moment around 5G. Parallel host Shelley Brisbane had a similar moment around TikTok. Hear about both in a few minutes. Look for that show and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can Live goes live again today, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash canray. Be there when that happens or grab the audio podcast later. Look for Mac OS Can Live wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Audible Plus. Visit audible.com slash Mac OS Can or text Mac OS Can to 500 500 to start your free 30 day trial. This show is also supported by people like you patrons through patreon find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash mac os can advertising handled by backbeat media online at backbeatmedia.com you can reach me a couple of ways info at mac or call 716 780 Four zero eight zero. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.